Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship with Grove Town United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Sandy Heslop, the pastor. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. It's a time of preparation leading up to Easter and a time for us to reflect on our need for repentance and to nurture our relationship with God. It's often a time when people focus on giving up something so they can focus on God in a better way. But more positively, it can be a time for us to take on something new. We're continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit, and today's element of our single fruit is faithfulness. So I encourage you to decide today to take on more faithfulness to God, to yourself, and to others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with praise today that you are faithful to your people and you always keep your promises. Thank you for never leaving us alone and for working on our behalf in ways we can't even imagine. Help us increase our faithfulness to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And now let us be called into worship. The scripture for February 21st comes from the NIV Bible. Psalm 36, verses 5 through 9. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Faithful and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for creating us. Thank you for life. Make us grateful for each moment we spend on this earth. As we approach Easter, help us to be mindful of the great love and sacrifice it took for you to give your son Jesus and for Jesus to voluntarily go to the cross for our sins and sinfulness. We confess that we are undeserving. We know we would be lost without your love and mercy. Forgive us for our sins. Heal us and pour out your mercy on us to help us to do the same for others. And now hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we're going to be reading two scriptures, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the a portion of scripture that we've been reading for the past few weeks relating to the fruit of the Spirit. And then we're going to also be reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. We'll read the Daniel portion in a moment. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
and self-control. We're continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit, and today we are looking at faithfulness. As we have seen, the first three components of this single fruit, love, joy, and peace, best relate to our relationship with God. Kindness, goodness, and patience relate most to our relationships with others. And the last three are more applicable to who Christians are to be within themselves. What do you think of when you hear the word faithful? Do you think about the promises made and kept within marriage vows? Or perhaps the loyalty of a good friend? If anyone has ever experienced unfaithfulness in either of those cases or some other case, you're aware of how important true faithfulness can be. But true faithfulness comes from a person who first understands God's faithfulness and nurtures the ability to be faithful to others. It's a true measure of a Christian's character. One person who displays godly faithfulness very well in the scriptures is Daniel. Daniel was faithful within himself, which allowed him to be faithful to God and to others. Let's read a portion of Daniel's story in Daniel 6, 1 through 10. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and this word can also be translated faithful and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So the administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, O oh, King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone pr who prays to any god or man during the next 30 days except to you, O oh king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This passage that we just read describes a portion of events in Daniel's life 
that highlights the kind of man that Daniel was. Let's take a few moments to review more of the details of Daniel's story. When Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon, Babylon defeated Judah in 586 BC. They destroyed Jerusalem and carried Judah's royalty, their leaders, and prominent citizens away into captivity. Daniel, a young man of the royal house, and many of his friends were among this group. <clears throat> When they arrived in Babylon, the king chose some of the men from Judah's royal house to train for three years so they could eventually go into the king's service. He told his chief court official, Ashpenaz, to choose some young men who were physically fit, handsome, and intelligent. He was to teach them to speak the language of the Babylonians, to train them in the ways of the life of the court, and to feed them the rich and bountiful food from the king's table. Daniel was one of the young men who was chosen, but he did not want to eat the food that was served to him because he said it defiled him. He asked for and was granted permission to eat only vegetables and water as he had been used to eating in Judah. His guard allowed Daniel and his friends to eat this way for 10 days. And after that time, they were in visibly better condition than the others. Daniel did not want to eat the food from the king's table because he knew the first portion of it had been offered to idols and that part of the wine had been poured out upon a pagan altar. Daniel risked his opportunity to serve King Nebuchadnezzar, and perhaps he even risked death if he did not follow the king's instructions, but he remained faithful to the one true God. This was the beginning of Daniel's continued faithfulness to God, and his rise to prominence in the Babylonian Empire. When King Nebuchadnezzar had troubling dreams and his own wise men could not interpret them, by God's grace, Daniel was able to interpret them. As he did so on several occasions, the message was not always favorable to the king but Daniel always presented him with the truth. The years passed and Daniel continued to be held in high esteem by the king, but eventually Nebuchadnezzar died and his son Belshazzar became king. Once when Belshazzar held a great banquet, an inscription appeared on the wall of the banquet hall. Daniel was able to interpret the inscription and so was promoted to the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But King Belshazzar died that very night. Now Babylon was eventually defeated by the Persians whose king was Cyrus. And there's some uncertainty about whether King Cyrus and King Darius that we read about this morning were the same person or if Darius was a governor under Cyrus, but at some point Darius was called king and was in charge of the entire kingdom. And that, that's the portion of the scripture that we read from this morning. Many years had passed since David had arrived in Babylon, not yet 20 years old. And now he was up in years, probably around 70. Obviously, Daniel held the high esteem of Darius because when Darius decided to appoint 120 satraps or local rulers to rule the kingdom, he also intended to appoint three administrators over them. One of those administrators was to be Daniel. 
So not counting Daniel, the other 122 appointees did not want Daniel to be in such a high place of leadership, maybe out of jealousy or because he was from Judah and not Babylon. Racial issues abounded even then. I hope you remember from our reading that the satraps and other two administrators came up with a plan to discredit Daniel. Verses 4 through 6 said, At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel and his conduct of government affairs. But they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy, faithful, and neither corrupt nor negligent. In addition, they knew that Daniel's faithfulness was because of his love of God. In the absence of anything to charge him with, they went to King Darius and had him sign an edict, a law, according to the laws of the Medes and Persians. When a ruler signed such a law, it could be repealed by no one, not even the one who proclaimed it. They caught, taught King Darius into signing this edict, which said that for the next 30 days, anyone who prayed to anyone but the king would be thrown into the lion's den. The decree was written and signed and it was made known to all the people. Daniel knew about this decree. So what did Daniel do? He did what he had always done. Three times a day, he went to his room, faced Jerusalem, got on his knees and prayed to God. That of course was just what his enemies wanted him to do and they conveniently caught him praying, disobeying the new law, and they reported it to King Darius, who had no choice but to follow through by throwing Daniel into the lion's den, even though he did not want to. You know the rest of the story. On the morning after Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, at first light, King Darius went near the den and called for Daniel. Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouth, mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. The king was delighted. Daniel's accusers took his place in the lion's den where they did not fare as well as Daniel. And Darius wrote a letter praising Daniel's God, whom he called the living God, to, and we read in verse 25, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land. Daniel went on to king, serve under King Darius and to an interpret dreams for another 15 or so years, all the time remaining faithful to the one true God who had saved him from the mouth of the lions because of his faithfulness. Have you ever wondered what might have happened if Daniel had just held out for 30 days? Do you think he would have lost favor in eyes, the eyes of the king? Probably not. The king probably would not even have known that Daniel was not following his law. But Daniel would have known. Daniel would not pray to the false god Darius, nor would he stop praying to the God whom he knew was always faithful. 
even to avoid the lion's den. It took great faith in God for Daniel to remain faithful to God. And his faithfulness resulted in God's being praised throughout the empire. That's the kind of faithfulness we receive from the Holy Spirit. It is a characteristic fruit of Christians. Is your faith that strong? Is my faith that strong? Are you determined to be obedient to God no matter what the circumstances? Has your faith been tested? When we have a personal daily walk with God, we learn that God is faithful. We know that God never breaks a promise and never abandons us. We can say, along with the writer of Lamentations, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Think about your experience with faithfulness. Have you been totally trustworthy to anyone? Have you kept all your promises? Sometimes we have good intentions, but we just forget or we get distracted and maybe even unintentionally break a promise. Is there anyone who is significant to you who has been totally faithful to you in every way? Perhaps you overlook a broken promise because the person is usually trustworthy. But everyone who is close to you has probably let you down in some way, even an insignificant one. These things happen because we are imperfect. We cannot be totally trustworthy on our own. But the Holy Spirit gives us this component of our fruit and we would do well to nurture it. Jesus taught about the importance of faithfulness to his disciples and his parable of the talents. Jesus said that the master told the servants who he had invested, um, who had invested and increased the money that the master had given them well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Think of how wonderful those words are. Well done, good and faithful servant. Although our faithfulness to God should come as a result of our love for God and God's faithfulness, we will receive a reward if we remain faithful to the end. We will share in God's eternal happiness. Have you experienced God's faithfulness personally? Have you put your trust and your life in God's hands? If not, Please make the decision today to become a follower of Jesus Christ. He will prove to be faithful in every circumstance. Talk to someone who can help you understand this new path you've chosen to become a faithful servant of Christ. If you don't know who to talk to, please call our church office at 706-651-1177. If no one answers, leave a message and someone will call you back. If you're already a Christian, take a look at your fruit. How is the element of faithfulness doing? Is it strong and healthy or is it shriveled and maybe a bit wormy? How trustworthy, how faithful are you to God? to friends, 
to family. Maybe your faithfulness needs a little extra care. Your faithfulness is on display to others and you can be sure that others are watching. Your faithfulness can be a great witness of God to the world. If you're faithfully following Jesus Christ in a daily walk, continue on that path. Remain faithful to God and to others and continue to nurture your fruit. Heavenly Father, thank you for your perfect love and faithfulness toward us. Let us grow in faithfulness each day because of our relationship with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You know, it's time for our stewardship moment. Thank you for your faithful stewardship. And this is just a reminder that uh, we are taking a special offering in February for the Redbird Mission, which ministers to people in Appalachia. This has become an annual offering for us at Grovetown United Methodist Church. Also, next Sunday, we will be taking uh, the special offering that is taken in the North Georgia Conference for the Housing and Homeless Council. Every penny that you give goes to help the homeless in North Georgia. If you want to give to those offerings in addition to your regular tithes and offerings, thank you. In doing so, you are helping us continue to do the work, to do the work of Jesus on this earth. Thank you for sending your regular tithes. <clears throat> if you have not been doing so, now is a good time to start. That is a part of faithfulness to God. You may send your tithes and offerings to Grovetown United Methodist Church, 206 East Robinson Avenue, Grovetown, Georgia, 30813. You may send them to our treasurer, Carol, or uh through your bank with bill pay. And we also have a Venmo account. Uh, if you are not a member of our congregation and you belong to another church, remember that they need your faithfulness and your tithes and offerings. This week, we have a very special treat. Reverend Johan Go and Reverend Juhi Lee, both Korean clergy from the New England Conference of the United Methodist Church, have recorded some beautiful music from our United Methodist hymnal that we can use free of charge as long as we have our CCLI license, which we do. And we're going to be using this beautiful music in worship um, as long as we can, as long as it's available. Today, I can't think of a hymn that is more appropriate than Great is Thy Faithfulness. So please listen prayerfully as these wonderful musicians play. Thank you.
thank you so much, Reverends Go and Lee, for helping to enhance our worship experience with your gifts of music. Now receive your benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Amen. I hope to see you or meet you here again next week.